In this video, we reinstall the belt, the nose plate, and the bottom cover back onto our Singer Featherweights. The parts you will need for this step of the restoration are a belt. This belt is the one I like the most. It is from the Featherweight Shop. It's their super belt. I never have any issues with it, so it's my go-to belt for a featherweight. Your nose plate. You will need the nose plate and the thumb screw for the nose plate. We need this back on before we start sewing because we need the thread guides here in the nose plate. And finally, your feet. These are replacement feet. You can find them in lots of different places. These are from the Singer Featherweight shop. Sometimes they have black ones, but sometimes all I can get are the gray ones, which is fine. So let's start with the belt. So the first step to reinstall the belt is to remove the hand wheel. We needed it on while we were reinstalling other parts to the featherweight, but now we need to take it off. So if you're here just to learn how to replace a belt, this is essentially what you would do. We first need to remove this stop motion knob here, and that is done by removing this little screw right here. And we're going to go ahead and take it all the way out. Once you have the screw out, hold the hand wheel still and just turn the stop motion knob to the left and just kind of keep your hand under it so when it falls, it doesn't hit any of the paint. Next, we have the washer we want to take off. And finally, we should just be able to pull the hand wheel off like that. Now, if you have the belt on, you may have to wiggle and jiggle a little bit more, but you will be able to pull it off and then remove the belt from the pulley end down here and normally if you just kind of pull the belt and spin the pulley it will come out so now we have all the parts off we can take our belt and i want to talk to you about this do not get oil or grease on the belt if you do that it will slip once it's on the hand wheel and you're sewing and it can be very annoying but what i like to do is down here at the pulley end i kind of place the belt here and push it in and then see the pulley turning as I pull the belt it just catches right inside the pulley into the groove where it's supposed to go very simple now I can take my hand wheel and the belts gonna go in this groove right here on the hand wheel so I'm gonna fit it into the groove and then I'm going to pull up and try to put it onto the shaft here now what happens is that because the motor has not been positioned to a position that's friendly for installing a belt, I don't have enough reach. So what I want to do is there's a screw right here. You can see it right there. Let's go ahead and loosen that screw. We don't have to take the screw out. We just wanna loosen it so we can raise up the motor just a little bit. That's going to give us the slack that we need. So now again, I'm gonna catch the belt, and now I can easily slide the hand wheel onto the shaft. Now, let's go ahead and put the rest of the parts back on the hand wheel real quick, and then we'll adjust this belt. So for me personally, I like to turn the machine on its nose to put this washer on, because otherwise, there's just a small enough lip here, it will fall off and it will just give you a headache. So. We're gonna take the washer and you can see that there are these little points in the center, two of them, that kind of angle up like this. Or if you have it turned this way, down like that. You want them to be angled up, pointing to the ceiling. And you'll also notice the part numbers are on that side. So we're just going to set it on, kind of push it down with your fingers and then we're going to go ahead and spin the stop motion knob on. Now, before we add the screw, what we're going to do is the screw is going to come through this hole like this, and it will stick out this hole just a little bit. So 
this little unthreaded part is actually going to be sticking out of this hole. What I wanna do at that point, once I have it tightened down, is make sure that it's not bumping one of these prongs or that it's right before one of them so I cannot turn the stop motion knob counterclockwise when I want to wind a bobbin. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna screw the knob on. Now, here is my hole and I'm going to look underneath and let me see if I can show you. Okay, if you look, right here's my hole, right there. Right there, do you see that little piece of metal? That's one of those outside tabs on the stop motion knob. If I try to put my screw in this hole, it's going to hit that and I won't be able to use the stop motion feature. So what I have to do is take this off and flip the washer. So I'm just spinning it off. I'm gonna pick up the washer and I'm just gonna spin it around halfway like that. Make sure it's on all the way. And now when we look, I can see the hole, but there is no metal tabs in my way. Now I can add the screw back. And it's just so much easier if you put it up on its nose. So I want to tighten this down all the way. Now, final check. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. I can spin it and my needle bar is moving when I spin it. But if I hold the hand wheel with one hand and turn this counterclockwise until it stops, stop motion is engaged. We turn the hand wheel and the needle bar doesn't move. Turn it back on. The needle bar moves. So that's what you should have happen when you put your belt on. And we're going to adjust this belt. We're going to talk about that next. But first, I've been having trouble with this machine and the stop motion feature is not always working as it should. Right now it is. So I think what I'm going to do, I am going to replace the collar that the hand wheel fits onto and I'll try to save that for a different video outside of the restoration series. But this stop motion feature is what you should have when you wind your bobbin that's what you want because the needle bar doesn't move, but the bobbin winds. But in this case, I've been fighting just to show you this, which is hopefully what you have on your machine. So I'm going to disengage the stop motion feature. Needle bar moves. This is when we're sewing. And then engage it. Ah, see, there's my problem. We're going to keep moving forward though with the restoration knowing that I'm going to address this needle bar. Sometimes it moves, sometimes it doesn't, can't make up its mind. So on to finishing up with the belt. What we want to do now, how much tension or slack should you have on this belt? And I kind of like to do the finger test. It shouldn't be too tight. It should have a little bit of spring to it. And a lot of times, the best way to kind of adjust the belt is to loosen up this motor mount screw here and just kind of let the motor relax a little bit. So I'm kind of letting it relax. I'm going to bring it down a little bit further. Now this is starting to get a little more taut as I pinch it. I kind of like it a little bit more relaxed. So I'm going to kind of raise the motor up here in the mount and I'm going to tighten that motor mount screw back down. I like that. These belts are very grippy. It doesn't need to be super duper tight and stretching out the belt. Let's see if it's going to play. 
with me or if it's going to keep giving me trouble. The stop motion is engaged, so my needle bar shouldn't move. And it's not right now. But I'll tell you what, it was giving me some trouble before. So I don't think I'm done with this hand wheel. So we have the belt back on the machine. And remember, when you put it on, you don't want it to be super, super tight. You want there to be a little bit of relaxation here. And normally, just loosening your motor mount screw right here and kind of letting it fall and hang into place is the best way to do it. If when you start sewing, you start noticing slipping, then maybe you need to loosen it or tighten it. But normally just kind of letting gravity do its work, it will kind of tell you right where it wants to sit. So now we can put those feet back on. <laughs> so we have our four little rubber feet here and these screws. And this is pretty easy peasy. I like to take my screw and push it into the foot first and then situate it into the hole and tighten it up. And if you clean up these screws, they should go in no problem. These are the ones that tend to get rusty out of all the screws on the machine. The feet screws are the worst. So a little bit of sandpaper, over the top and a little bit of rust remover and look how nice they come out. Now we can also go ahead and put on the bottom cover if we want. Putting on the bottom cover, it's very simple. <laughs> I filmed this and my microphone wasn't plugged in so I missed the part where I stuck this on, this felt liner for the bottom of the drip pan. But I think if you've gotten this far, you're very smart and you can figure that out yourself. I like to buy the ones from the featherweight shop that have this peel away paper that exposes a sticky back. They just stay in place. You can make these out of felt yourself if you want and find a different way to stick them down. If you're using one of the ones from a featherweight shop, just be careful really line it up and position it exactly the way you want it because they are very sticky. And so once it's down, it's kind of down and it's hard to adjust the placement. So we have the pad on, it goes on the bottom of the machine, just like this. And then you should have one of the little spool pin felts, that's all it is, that goes between this metal bottom and this metal thumb nut because that little spool pen felt actually will stop any vibration noises that's coming from this and this hitting together while you sew. So if you don't have one, you can find spool pen felts, very inexpensive, doesn't matter what color it is, just stick it on there and that will help with sound. Another thing, you want to make sure that your wires are definitely flat enough up inside the machine when you put this on. So if you took them all out and you put them back in, make sure they're not pushing out right here. You don't need to tuck them in a little bit differently. It should fit up against the bottom of the machine really well. So we can put on our nose plate. This is pretty simple. There's a cutout in the nose plate. That's where this part of the thread take up kind of feeds through. And then holding it into place, you'll see the little hole in the face of the machine. That's where your little thumb screw goes. And just twist it down. So now we have the thread take up sticking out. Plus we have this thread guide and this lower thread guide here for when we thread up the machine to sew, which is what we're going to be doing next. And I promised that we would test sew, but I'm not going to include it in this video, but I will upload both videos at the same time. So if you're really excited and just want to get started, you can watch both of them back to back and start your test sewing. I want to thank everyone who's been following along for all of their patience while you wait for the next video, especially since I ran into the problem with this collar on the end of the hand wheel and it took me a few days to get everything right so I can finish filming this particular portion. We'll put that bed on after we do our first test sew, just in case there's anything you want to adjust in the hook area. I don't recommend putting the bed on until your machine is sewing exactly the way that you want it. So the bed extension will definitely go on last. 
Again, thank you so much. Everyone's support and kind words throughout this process has been really amazing. I look forward to seeing you all again real soon. Bye. Thank you.